Hello everyone, in this video we're going to look at how the OET writing test is assessed. Because of course if you know how it's assessed then you've got a good idea of what the examiners will be looking for and then you can give it to them. We're going to be focusing on the veterinary science paper but don't worry it's going to be useful for everyone if you're not sure about the assessment criteria because we'll take a good look at it and you'll then gain a better understanding of the key points that make up a good letter and you'll understand what you should be aiming for. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Sona, I'm going to be your online OET teacher and I'm a premium preparation provider of the OET with Bose Learning and being a premium preparation provider means that I've done extra study to make sure that I can produce courses which are useful and which will help you on your OET learning journey. So, as I say, we're going to be looking at the assessment criteria and there are six different ones that we need to look at. The first one being purpose. You can check these out online at the Occupational English Test website. They're freely available for everyone. As I say, we're going to be focusing on purpose, which as you can see here is marked on a scale of zero to three. You need to be aiming for a three in order to get a B. Two is possibly okay, but really, ideally, you need to be getting a three. How do you do that? Well, you have to make sure that the purpose of the document is immediately apparent and sufficiently expanded. So in order to do that, you've got to understand who you are who you're writing to and why. And you need to be able to convey this in your opening lines. You need to describe the situation, describe the patient and describe what's happened. Why are you writing to the reader? So make sure that your opening paragraph is nice and clear. Understand who your patient is. We always include that information in the opening, in the reline. Think about why you're writing and summarise this in your opening. So is it a referral? Is it a letter of transfer? Is it a discharge letter? And then how urgent it is. So perhaps you are transferring your patient, a four-year-old dog, for urgent medical care in the intensive care ward. So you need to explain that. And then you follow this up in the rest of the letter in order to score well, in order to score that three. Now, let's look at the rest of the criteria then. And we have got one, two, three, four, five left. Content, conciseness and clarity, genre and style, organisation and layout and language. And what you can see here is that it's a bit different from purpose in that it's scored out of seven. In order to get your B, you need to be aiming for at least five in each one. Obviously, if you can get a bit more in some of them, then maybe if you make a few mistakes in something else, it will balance out. But aim for around five or higher for each part. So content, what are they looking for in content? Here, they want to make sure that once the reader has read your letter, they can carry on caring for your patient. So for example, if you're writing a letter to the owner of a dog to explain your diagnosis and the aftercare, how to care for the dog, then they need to be able to do that from reading your letter. If you're writing to a person who doesn't know your patient, for example, you're writing to a specialist to seek confirmation about the diagnosis you have given to the cat in your care, then you need to be able to explain to the reader what the problem is, what's happened maybe, what kind of care you've already given and what care or treatment needs to be given in the future. So you need to explain that they need to provide the cat with a proper diagnosis. It's also important that you're accurate this crosses over into grammar because we have to make sure that what we're saying is really true. If something happened in the past, the grammar reflects that. If it's going to happen or ongoing, then that also is reflected in the grammar, singular, plural, things like that. But also in terms of spelling, 
name giving, medication, etc. So for content to do well, the reader should be able to carry on caring for your patient after they have read what you've written. Moving on to conciseness and clarity then, this is kind of the opposite of content if you like. You don't want to be writing too much, you don't want to be writing anything that's irrelevant. Maybe in the case notes they explain the kind of diet the dog in your care is being given. You can include that but only if it's relevant to the reason why you're writing. If it's not don't put it in. The other thing to think about is don't write 10 words when five is enough. You don't need to use linkers such as furthermore, moreover, nevertheless. That's great in academic writing, it's great in exams, something like the IELTS, but it's not used in the OET where time is of the essence. You want to be kind to your reader and let them read efficiently. So there's no need to say, nevertheless, I prescribed this medication. You can just say, I prescribed this medication. Make sure you're also summarising effectively. So you're bringing everything together and you should be aiming for around 180 to 200 words. Don't get too stressed about the word count. Make sure the information is all important, is all relevant and that nothing extra has been thrown in. And then once you have that content, the next thing to think about is the organisation and layout. In the case notes, you might get a chronological presentation of your bird that the owners have brought in to you. When they were born, when they first came in, their second visit and now their third visit. But think about, is that the way the reader wants the information? So when you're writing, always write the most important things first. It might be a chronological presentation, but it might not be. You might be starting with the current presenting problem. Just be careful with things like that. The other thing to be wary of is that it's a formal letter, so you have to use formal language and the correct kind of layout. If you want more information about this, I'm going to put some links up to previous videos that you can check out for more information. And finally, as I said, language. This, of course, is where your grammar is important, your punctuation is important, so make sure you're checking all those things, you're proofreading what you've written, be careful of spelling, copy anything down carefully, but also make sure you're writing appropriately to the reader. If, for example, you've been asked to write a letter to the family so that they know how to treat a dog with diabetes, you would write in a very different way from if you were writing to a specialist to confirm your diagnosis. If you're writing to a support group leader asking them to contact the owner because they might need extra support looking after their puppy, then you'd be, again, using different kind of language to if you were writing to an emergency department to transfer your patient for intensive care. So think about who you're writing to. Think about whether abbreviations are appropriate. Will the reader understand them? Are you using any medical jargon? If you're writing to someone who's not medically trained, the family, for example, then be careful of using anything too technical. You can use it, but always explain in lay language what you're trying to say. Well, I hope you found that useful. Please do let me know. Put in a comment, share this with a friend or a colleague, give it a like and tell me where you're from. I'd love to know. Put in a little comment and tell me whereabouts in the world you're located and also what profession you are. If you have any questions too, you can always let me know. I'll be happy to try and help if I can. And I'd be so happy that if you like this, you can help my channel to grow by sharing this with friends or colleagues and then just watching some more videos as well. I hope you like them too. We have over 150 different videos for you to choose from, so there's plenty for you to look at. Finally, if you want a regular dose of all things OET, then why not sign up to my free newsletter? I'm going to put the link in the information box below. Well then, thank you very much for watching. Um, I hope to see you again. Until then, take care. Bye bye.